you, thank you very much. Thank you. I, I'm just so delighted to be here and uh, at your conference to end, uh, end the sessions with you. This is wonderful because we're a nice, intimate group, which means we can be interactive. Are you happy with that? Yes. And I can hear. Somebody at the back there say something just so I can hear. Hello. There you go. Wonderful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to craft this session just for you. I'll explain what I want to try and work my way through. I want to have us look at all the ideas you've been picking up, looking at the technology, telehealth, how people behave, people centricity, and really understand what that means for you in terms of putting it into practice. So I want to pull all those ideas together and help you turn them into something useful. So that's my plan. I also have a second plan, which is hidden inside the first plan, which is I want to inject some ideas which are a little bit unconventional, but actually are correct, <laughs> okay? So that's my second plan. My third plan, one of the things I do is I sponsor an event for the health service, an NHS, called the CubeX, which is like a TEDx, mini TED, which happens on Wednesdays. And people join in from around the world virtually. And they all come together and they share and learn. And so somewhere in the presentation, I'm going to sneak in an advert, and you won't notice. <laughs> so that's my plan. OK, great. So now I have to start with you. Um, I want you to imagine the next 40 minutes is fabulous. I don't know, you learn how to take your ideas, engage people, overcome resistance to change, get the procurement guys just to give you cash. I don't know what it is. Make sure that all the, the people who are being cared for and the carers love what you're doing. I don't know what it is, but it's brilliant. What's your greatest hope? What is it which if you learned in the next 40 minutes would make this 40 minutes the best 40 minutes of the whole day? No, no, the best 40 minutes of the conference. No, put some pressure on me. The best 40 minutes of your whole life. What would you need to learn to make that happen? Okay, now it's very unlikely it'll be the best 40 minutes of your life, but you never know, okay? There's some strange people out there. So that's question one, what are your greatest hopes? Question two, I want you to imagine the next 40 minutes is a disaster. You stayed, you've got to the end, you're hoping to get something useful, uh, it was bad. What did I do wrong? Okay, you got the two questions? Okay, we'll work like this. You are not allowed to work on your own. So you're gonna have to pair up with somebody and chat just for, a minute, what do I want, what don't I want? I'll collect the first, or oh, three of each, three hopes and three fears, and we'll use that to make our shared agenda. Is that a plan? Is that a plan? Are you okay to be interactive? Is that a plan? Yeah. Yes, okay, your minute has started, go. It's about 10 seconds left. Okay, great. What would you like us to start with? Should we start by talking about the hopes or talking about the fears? What would you prefer? Hopes or fears? Hopes. Two hopeful people. <laughs> okay, so let's start with the fears. What don't you want to spend our time on? Go, just shout. Same old thing. Same old stuff. Same old stuff. The technology is here to enable you to care for people. There are lots of new technologies, including big data, that sort of thing. Oh, I'm not going to make it to 40 minutes if I don't do the same old boring stuff. Okay, any others you don't want me to spend my time on? Just talking. So you want some examples. So if I brought somebody to actually com communicate with you to talk about working in a connected way, that would be useful. Okay, just talk, just talk. Okay, great. And one final one. Well, you leave here and nothing changes. Good grief, that would be terrible. Leave and nothing changes, okay? So, um, yeah, so um, those are the fears, okay? Same old stuff, it's all just talk. You leave here and nothing changes. I, I know you can't read my handwriting. It's not for you, it's for me. It's my notes, okay? Great, should we do the hopes? What would you like to get out of the session? Really, really. So you leave believing you can do it. Uh, there's a lyric there, leave and believe. I like that, believe, okay? And another one, there was someone else walking over there? Go. Thinking of something that I haven't thought of already. So, a brand new idea. Or a product. Brand new thingy. thingy. Okay, great. <laughs> I do technical. Uh, Give me a couple more. Deal with the uh, fear day or the telecare. Um, people not understanding what they're getting. Ah, how to deal with people not getting it. Yes. They don't get it what it does or what it is. Okay, great. Uh, one more, maybe. 
Something tangible, brand new thingy, okay? When you say tangible, what do you mean? So it's the real putting something practical into, into place. Brilliant. Okay. For that, um, three things, four things we've got. One is leave and believe. We've got a brand new thingy. We've got how to deal with people so they get telehealth, etc. And we've got um, actually something tangible. Okay. If I'm going to deliver something tangible on this list, I'm going to need your help. So I know you've just met the people who you've just said hopes, uh, shared hopes and fears with, but just 10 seconds. Just shake hands with them, check the people behind you, and relax so we can have a dialogue. Yeah? Don't sit there thinking, who's here? Just 10 seconds. Just shake hands with them. I'm so-and-so. Look at the people behind you. Great. Brilliant. Okay. Okay, are they okay? Are these people fine? They're good? Good to work with? Good to work with? Fabulous. Okay. So what I'd like to do then is um, just sort of start by telling you a little bit about how, what I'm up to, how I actually do and who I am and so on. Um, I'm very strange because I'm about three or four different people depending on how many computers I'm connected to. Okay, sounds funny. Um, but you might have noticed that the space behind me, which I've been, I've been sort of wandering around in here, is actually one of my uh, virtual classrooms. So let me find somewhere to stand where you can, you can, uh, you can actually see. So I'll just go to the, that one called View Presentation. There you go. And that's one of my guests who's going to give us like a two-minute cameo at some stage about working virtually and what it means in terms of behavior. Why am I showing you this? I'm showing you this because I had the funniest experience recently. I live what I teach. I live what I do. Are you with me? That's what I've always done. And two stories which I hope will help you get some better outcomes and be able to communicate better what telehealth actually means. Um, the first one, I was doing a presentation like this for a big technology company. And uh, during the coffee break beforehand, we were chatting, you know, chit-chat, chit-chat, chit. And I met the head of digital, so a very important person, you know, huge investment, digital, pays for all the technology investments. And I said to him, what I'm going to do is, I'm, my, my, you'll love what I'm doing because my, my presentation is going to be streamed from the cloud. Yes? What do you think he said? What? No. He said, he said, what a risk to take. And, and I burst out laughing. Because what it sort of epitomizes is everyone's talking, yeah, digital, digital. Oh, right, right. And then it comes to the meat, and they're too scared to do it themselves. The second story, which is quite funny, is you probably worked out that I'm wearing a wearable on my arm here. That's my mouse, OK? So that's what I'm wearing over there. Now, the thing about this mouse is it's technology. It's really cool technology. It's just a little band. You know how they work. They read your signs and things like that. OK, great. So the company who, did, who put this together, one thing I can tell you for sure is that nobody in that company has ever used their own product. Do you know how I know that? <laughs> because, you see, the way you turn it on is you, you tap. You see what I've done? <laughs> you see what happens. OK. That was it. You see, there is no local off switch. And you turn it on by tapping your fingers together. Do, do you see my problem? So I know they've never used it, because if they used it, what happened to me would have happened to them. And they'd have put a switch on here. <laughs> OK, the reason I'm telling you that is because you're talking about putting real human beings at the center of the services which you're delivering. And one thing I can tell you for sure is that most people do not spend enough time really listening to where people are coming from. I'm going to demonstrate it to you just so you understand. You know you were in a pair just now? You are in a pair? You are in a pair? Yeah, OK, great. What I want you to do is... I Okay, I'd like, is it okay if you stand up? Okay, so stand up in your pairs, okay? Plus, I need, I need one person as a, as, a, as a guinea pig, okay? So we're all in pairs now, pairs, pairs, pairs. Okay, can I, Alison, can I use you as a, my guinea pig? Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to teach you how to count to three. Can you imagine that? Uh, anyone here know how to count to three? Yes, but we're going to do it together, collaboratively, okay? So what happens is I say one, Alison says two, I say three, and then she says one, two, three, and we go as fast as we can. Go and have a go and see what happens. In your pairs. Rubbish! Stop! Stop! That's embarrassing. Look, look. 
stop, stop. I make it easier for you. I make, I make it much easier for you. Okay, so what we're doing is we're going to go like this. Forget one, because obviously it's too difficult for you. So we'll go click, then you go two, then three. Click, two, three, click, two. It's really fast. Have a go. See how that comes out. Rubbish! Stop, stop, stop. Embarrassing, embarrassing. Wait, wait, wait. Look, numbers are hard for you. Forget one and two. Obviously, too difficult for you. So what we do is we go click, then the other person claps their hand together, then three. Click, claps, three. Click, claps, three. Fast, very fast. See how you go on. No. <laughs> then you're supposed to go one, two, three. One, two. Click, click, clap, three. Click, clap, three. Click. Okay, rubbish. Stop, stop, stop. Okay, look. So click, then the other person claps, then you go three, then they click, then you clap. So you can't cheat and keep doing the same thing over and over again. I saw you cheating. Look, do it properly, okay? Numbers too hard for you. Much, much easier. First person clicks, second person claps, third person slaps their thigh. Then the first person clicks again. Have a go, see how that goes. Click, clap, slap, click. Stop, stop, stop. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back to one, two, three and tell me what's just like one, two, three and see how it comes out. One, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, well done. Congratulations. You learned how to count to three. Well done. Applaud yourselves. Fabulous. Okay, so here's the question Why couldn't you count to three at the start? Please sit down. Why couldn't you count to three at the start? You see, what happened at the start was something very, very fundamental, which is this is why these people have never used their own product. When an idea comes out of your head, you're already doomed. Do you understand how human beings are designed? You see, once upon a time, when we were hunter-gatherers, it was quite a dangerous world to live in. It was quite difficult to get food. So what happened was we were really stick thin. We were all hunter-gatherers trying to catch rabbits. Now, Usain Bolt, who's the fastest man on the planet, can run at 26 miles an hour. The average rabbit runs at 32 miles an hour. You see the problem? So stick thin. You have no choice. So your body has no nutrition. But you have this brain, which burns up energy 10 times faster than muscle. So what happens is your brain could starve you to death if you think too much. So what happens is you have a little bit of a mechanism down here in your back of your neck. So when you think of an idea based on a stimulus, it goes, hey, brain, I can see you're thinking. You're burning energy. Become emotionally attached to, in other words, fall in love with the idea and try to turn it into more food. Have you noticed how, all, how brilliant all your own ideas are? <laughs> your ideas are great, aren't they? And that's why, because you fall in love with them. Great. So I go one, two, three. So let's look at the process. So you go one, and it's your idea. You've just said one, and you're so proud you've said one <laughs> that you're thinking, hey, I got that right. It was one. <laughs> Meanwhile, other person here is trying to get it right. So they go two. And they're going, hey, I'm so cool, I got it too. But you were so busy enjoying yourself, you were not listening to them. Am I right? That's what you did at the beginning. So when they said two, you went one, or three. Are you with me? And they were not listening to you. So they went, okay. And then I got you to do silly things. And you relaxed. And you looked silly, so you couldn't be sort of uppish. And your brain started to relax and not be so focused on that idea. And then you went back to it and you were actually connected and collaborating. Do you understand? If you're serious about enabling care, it is crucial that you find ways to connect with all the different stakeholders involved in delivering that. What happens is, in many cases, we start from where we are and we go one, and they're not listening to us. And then we say, why don't they get it? Do you see what I mean? Whereas if we listened to what they said and forgot we were involved in telehealth or anything else, and we answered with words rather than a script, we might be able to explain what's going on. So in my world, for example, as you can see, I live virtually. 
If somebody says, oh, we're really finding it hard to bring our nurses together so that they can learn about leadership because their role is changing, okay, that's a good cue. It's much better than if I go, well, you could learn virtually in an integrated system and bring people together for free without travel. But if they start with that first sentence, you go, well, what's stopping you getting these nurses together? Well, we can't get them for more than half an hour. One, two, three. How else might you do it? And you start that conversation. So in order to be able to communicate what you're doing, you'll need to make that connection. That's the very first point I want to make. Almost everything which we dream of here will only happen through those connections. And because care is usually linked to human beings, we have to make sure that the people who are doing the caring, the services, the health, the, the, the doctors, are all part of that conversation. Otherwise, there really is no conversation except shifting some boxes. Can I move on? The second thing which I think I want to move on, on to, you okay? Okay, second thing I want to move on to is, um, is, what, is this one. This one made me laugh the other day. If I can find it, I'll share it with you. It was, um, no, not that one, this one. Here you go. I, went, I was talking at a conference, a Gartner conference, and uh, there was a, a you, they're called futurists. Futurists, is that the word? People who talk about futury things. Am I right? Okay, there's a futurist on before me, and he was talking about the future. And he was explaining how in the future, with things like Internet of Things, when you leave your house and get onto the train, your house will tell the office that you're coming, and the facilities management will rearrange the desks for you, and then when you arrive off the tram, you know, the other, the tram, in fact, the tram will get an extra carriage on because there are more people coming at that time, and the temperature will be controlled by what people want and what they're wearing because it can sense what they're wearing, and then you'll be sent messages that your kids have made it to school, and your mom's okay because she's had a, a cup of tea and the kettle went on, and then you walk to the office, and, and you described all these technology. I was going, wow. How? And then I asked myself the question, oh, why are they going to the office? <laughs> Is it just me? You see, I couldn't understand that because I live in a rather strange town. The town I live and work in is a town called Beaconsfield. And it's rather amazing because it has these people who are very different from the rest of us. They are actually time travelers. They travel through time. You're not impressed. Okay, so <laughs> let me just do that. Okay, so what happens is when they come along in the morning, they live in houses, just like the ones we probably have. You see, see no, look, two windows upstairs, typical sort of, I don't like that sort of thing, boxy thing, windows, that sort of thing, a door. And in the house they're in, they sit in front of these things called computers. And from their computers, they can do things like FaceTime with family members on the other side of the world. You with me? They have like smart metering, which can tell their bank what's happening beforehand, uh, stuff like that. But they have all this technology. They can watch YouTube videos whenever they want and stuff like that. It's amazing. That's a house they live in. It's amazing. Why? Because it's a 21st century house. But every morning they get dressed and they travel for an hour to go to this place called an office. Okay? So they travel to this office. So you must imagine the reason they've come to this office is not to do anything to do with computers because it doesn't make any sense. They must have come to come and chat or do post-its or drawing or something like that. No, 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 they sit in front of another computer. But this computer is amazing. It's been preserved. It's a 20th century computer. <laughs> Everything is locked down. It takes five minutes to load up. It won't play YouTube. You can't go on Twitter. Amazingly, you know, like they've held the 20th century in a, a time capsule. Brilliant stuff. So you imagine, what are they doing? They do this thing called email. Have you come across it? Amazing invention. Basically what happens is like a letter with a horse, you know, delivering it, but it's electronic. And uh, so what happens, I email you, you reply to me, you blind CC her, she bumps into him, he tells me, then the emails go 40 emails. And then finally, after everyone's sort of all over the place, we say the magic words, which are let's get together and have a meeting to discuss this, because nobody has the big picture. So we do all the work, and then we decide on the meeting. But bad news, we've all traveled to different offices, so we can't meet. So, so what do we do instead? We have a conference call, another amazing invention. It's a device sort of like this, not completely portable, has a wire on it, okay? And uh, everybody dials in, hello, hello, who's there? And then, then what they do is this called audio conference call. It, my definition is one person talking and 12 people continue to do their emails. <laughs> Pointless process. And they do this all day. Then on the way back, they're traveling back home and they're a bit bored, so they have these things called mobile devices which they use for reading content and catching up on emails. 
Have you any idea how ridiculous this is? The only thing which didn't change in this picture and in the previous picture of the tram is people's thinking and behavior. If you are serious about enabling care, if you are serious about transformation, if you're serious about making the world better, it's not by not changing your thinking or your behavior that you're going to succeed. Does that make sense? This is crazy, but that's what we always do. And when we get into that thing, the next thing which happens to us is probably my, um, my, my favorite diagram. It, it, you may, I hope you recognize it because I, I did the sample I took were very, very different from you. But it starts over here where it says I have a high workload. Obviously not you guys, nothing to do, just chilling out in ICC. So I don't have time to plan to do or to be creative. Net result is I don't realize how much work I'm committed to and I've only done half. So I say yes more than is realistic, pushing my workload up, giving me less time to plan or to do or to be creative. So I come close to, to deadlines other people think are important. They're worried they'll miss their goals. So guess what they do? They interrupt me. So I spend a lot of my time restarting half done jobs, pushing my workload up, giving me less time to plan or to do anything. You with me? So now people know I'm disorganized, they can interrupt me and get away with it. And it goes round. Have you seen this happening to your colleagues at work? Just your colleagues, huh? <laughs> How could I know your lives before I met you? Because everyone's in this mess. And why are they in this mess? Because they haven't changed their behavior. The world is very complex. And quite simply, you know, they're just doing everything the way they always have. And a lot of the things that they do have no effect. All those emails before the call, pointless. If you're serious about care and enabling people to care, you have to think about using the technology to make the human beings into superhumans, not using the technology on its own. The, the technology must allow us to do things we normally couldn't do, to show love we normally couldn't show, to be in places where we normally couldn't be. It's not just about collecting data and putting it on a screen. Seriously about care, because human beings are at the center of that. It's got to be making human beings superhuman. I did promise I'd say some unconventional things which would make you stressed. Are you still with me? Great, okay. So here's our challenge, and then we'll work our way towards the tangible stuff. The challenge is this one. Um, <laughs> the, the process you go through to try and be able to do that is quite difficult. I, I'll talk you through uh, like a short history of why this is such a nightmare in about 30 seconds. So maybe a short history of the world in 30 seconds, okay? Has anyone here noticed that the world has accelerated? Just not. Okay. Has anyone noticed there are more people on the planet? Has anyone noticed they're more connected? Has anyone noticed that even governments who should be saying, let's do the same thing, are saying, let's break everything? Have you noticed that? Okay. So... If this is the world, and this is now, and this is 30 years ago, past, okay, and um, this is 30 years, on this axis here, the number of people has gone up, the amount of change they're doing has gone up. If this is the past and this is now, how are the two points join together? Is it a straight line? Does it get sort of slightly bad every day? Accelerates up, thank you. Does that, okay? Why is that important? Because you see, if the world is doing that and we're not doing the same sort of curve, we're in trouble. Once upon a time, we could see what was coming. We could understand stuff. We used to do annual budgets. You could plan a whole year in advance. If you're in the public sector, you could plan three years in advance. Do you remember that stuff? So you could say, we need our funding for 2020. And you'd be able to be so precise about 2020. Okay. So I'm going to assume once upon a time, you can learn faster than the world was changing. And I'm going to ask you, how fast are you learning and changing as the world has been moving over the past 30 years? Let's do it together. I'll move the pen horizontally. If you want me to go up, shout up. If you want me to go down, shout down. If you want me to do the same, say same. Same, 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 same. In this conference. <laughs> okay, so guys, these two lines cross over and this is where it gets bad. If you can't learn faster than the world is changing, it makes it hard for you to understand what's going on around you, which means that the decisions you make are probably, how can I say this politely? Gibberish. I'll talk you through. So you want to transform how it all works. So you start off. And for many organizations, as this particular environment kicks off, they hit three things. One is they hit this nightmare of change. In other words, they can't see where they're going compared to where the world's going. They also will often hit this one of complexity. 
You know how you're planning, you think you know what you're doing, you can work your way through, but you see the world's all interconnected. So when you do one thing in one place, it impacts on something else. So all of a sudden you think you know what you're planning and then Brexit, for example, okay? And it comes out of the blue and you go, where did that come from? Or did anyone notice, who, who here bet on Donald Trump a year ago? The only person who did it, who I know, is a cartoonist, Scott Adams, who does Dilbert. A cart, hello? You with me? So, you have to realize this level of complexity means you get these things called black swans, which just pop up. So whatever plans you're thinking about in, te in terms of technology, just be aware that what you're looking at is probably not what's coming next. And at the same time, there is so much data and so much complexity, it's almost impossible to understand what's going on. But I didn't make this just to depress you. I made it so I could explain how best to deal with where you are. So this is a quick one. Many organizations, when you walk around them, they'll say things like, um, I have a meeting to discuss this. And do you recognize people saying things like this? Yes. OK. When organizations say this sort of thing, often what you'll discover is that they're very focused on things like efficiency, making sure things work. That's where their hearts are. And they're going, we must make cuts, because there's pressures on our costs and stuff like that. And they try to make cuts by doing less as opposed to doing differently. But they're incredibly efficient. If you're inside that organization, you feel it like a pressure. And then somebody comes along and says, let's use technology. And that's really painful. How do I use technology in that world? I'm focused on trying to make sure I stick to our formula and keep working. And so what happens is people get tempted. Uh, you know how sometimes when you have to go out, you have to put on a new tie or a new bit of gig or something so that you can actually look a little bit as if your old outfit is modern? Have you done that sort of thing or is it just me? Okay. This is what we call accessorizing. So you think we must do something technology. I know. Let's write a strategy paper and get everyone iPads. So they buy everyone iPads. And they all get given iPads at great expense. I call that accessorizing. It's just bolting stuff on. Nothing has changed them the thinking, processes, behavior. They think they're making progress, but they're not. They're just burning their money and making their lives harder for the people who work there. So that's the next one. Some people actually have already bought the iPads. So they go, well, now we're into change. But unfortunately, they have this problem. You see, this is a horse-drawn carriage. This is a horse-less carriage. You see, when horse-less carriages came along, the person at the back of the horse-drawn carriage got really fed up. Why? Because he trained up the person who was sitting in front, and he bought the horse. So when the horse-drawn carriage comes along, he goes, I wonder what we can do. And he goes off, and if you're not lucky, he actually attaches the horse back to the front of the carriage. No, I'm joking. But what happens in organizations is a new opportunity comes along, and instead of trying to understand the opportunity, they go, how can we use what you're proposing to do what we've been doing for five years? Do you understand that thinking? OK, it's a different mindset. They don't mean to do it. It's not because they're stupid. It's just where we are in terms of our evolution. So then we move to the next one. And this bit here is um, the, the, the messy world which we just talked about. And that's where most people are. And they end up a bit like this chicken farmer who's given a new piece of technology, a car, and he turns it into a chicken coop. Okay? You guys are talking about transformation. The important thing to remember is that a caterpillar is not a butterfly. Can I do that again? A caterpillar is not a butterfly. Sticking four wings on a caterpillar doesn't make it a butterfly. Should I explain that again? It's really important because you wanted something tangible. I'm going to give you homework. <laughs> okay? Caterpillars are brilliant at crawling along and chomping leaves. You with me? What are butterflies? What core competence of a butterfly? Long proboscis thing and flappy arms. You with me? They're not the same. What happens between the two is they build a little bit of scaffolding and they transform. So if you find organizations who have gone through that process, what you'll discover is two things. One is they break what they're currently doing. They hold it up with scaffolding, and they build something new. That's what you are trying to do. That, I think, is your vision. So it's not about telehealth. It's about building a much better health system. Ah, we'll call it telehealth. You've got to start from the end and work backwards. So I put some cards on your. Oops, Come back. I'll put some cards on your, on, your, on your tables. There's one which looks a little bit sort of weirdish. That one there. OK? That one there. Oh, so one of them's a weirdish one. The second one is a, uh, a freebie. I've given you a free ebook. Cost me nothing, OK? <laughs> OK? That card is just to remind you. I'm giving you 30 seconds. Please talk to the person next to you. Try and identify where you or your organization or your partners are in that journey 
and just have a look and see if they're doing the right things. If they really are trying to look at efficiency, then their focus really should be on making space to change. If, on the other hand, what they're trying to do is they've already bought all the iPads, then what they need to do is spin everything around the client, the customer, the person, and then they'll discover the things which are irrelevant. If they've already done that, then you have to stop them trying to backfill things and actually say, how do we drive innovation? And especially something called smart failure, which I'll explain in a second, which is doing stuff which is new. And then finally, we've got the last one, which is actual transformation. Can I give you a minute in your pairs? Just talk to each other. Yeah, I'm here. I think that, blah, blah. Is that okay? Yes? Person at the back? Yeah, go. Your minute has started. Chat. Go. Talk. <laughs> Okay, are there any questions? Are there any questions or comments? Can I break the conversations? Hello! <laughs> are there any questions or comments? It's just really scary. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't laugh. Sorry. Is this really scary? Yes, it is. <laughs> Brilliant. Fabulous. Thank you very much. A any other co is anyone else scared or? <laughs> yeah, bolt on is good. It, just think of it as accessories and how cool you're looking, and then it's fine. <laughs> you're too busy. <laughs> yeah. So, again, honestly, focus your efforts, because if you, if you try and jump right to the end, what will happen is somebody will sell you something and get you involved in something, and it will just go badly wrong. You, you can't go from being a highly efficient company, all of a sudden, and by Friday, we are transformed. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Uh, if it did, then we wouldn't have discussions about it. It's complicated that human beings are involved. Great. Maybe another question or comment. Yes, please, just shout, just okay. formality. This is very much about behavioral psychology and the way you, the interact, interact with the implications that are available. Yes. So technology can do it already. Technology, technology can do everything. There's an unlimited bar of creativity in our imagination. And getting those people to engage with it yes. is a real problem. Yes. So the human beings at the center are important. So I'm going to tell you two stories. I invited somebody to come and just uh, tell us a little bit about, just for two seconds, about something which we've been doing together. And, um, and, uh, and, and, and hi, Tam, are you there? Hello. Hi. So um, what I did was invited somebody I work with in the health service, uh, Dr. Tammy Watchhorn, and I said, please come and join us just for a couple of minutes. So she's been listening in because I just want you to talk about the behavior side of things. Um, so jump in a little bit closer. Uh, where should we go? With? Let's go to that one. So tell me what I'd like you to do is just quickly explain to us what we're looking at in this poster. Uh, so what we have in this poster is a picture of uh, two people that joined me on Cube to design our organization in NHS in Scotland's uh, innovation framework. And we highlighted really early that it was about behaviors and how we work and this poster aimed to describe that and it uh, it created a real buzz around the organization because it was people sitting with headsets on enjoying themselves uh, as funny cue bots but it actually really quickly changed how we work and created a real uh, buzz around innovation and new ways of working so uh, that was a really effective piece two years ago and it's just grown and grown since then Brilliant, thank you. Thanks, Tam. I just wanted your voice in the room. It was a bit loud, and you probably didn't notice that. But I wanted Tam's voice in the room because, as you said, there are no boundaries. This is what I wanted to demonstrate. I'm a small, medium-sized enterprise. I can use that. There are no boundaries. The boundaries are here and here. So what we're going to focus on is how do we get people to move through that transition and most importantly, I'm going to show you how you do that, how you make change happen for your vision without any resistance. Are you interested? 
great. Thanks, Tammy. Thank you very much. Tammy, we're going to zip back. I'm happy if you stay, but I think they've heard your voice. They've seen some of your projects. If they, if they use things like Google, they'll track you down. <laughs> okay. Thank you, for everyone. Tammy, applause. Yay! There you go. Thank you. Brilliant. Okay. So, human beings and the secrets. Okay. First thing to realize is you remember my story about how you fall in love with your own ideas. Okay. Let's just share. Let's do the scenario, okay? You've been to iTech. You've had some great ideas. You can see the opportunity for technologies and vision being the only boundary. Can I tell them the joke about the, the fish steak I took on you? Okay. So uh, that my friend, I can't remember his name, he was here with a couple of other people. They're talking about technology. We can do everything. We can use virtual environments, blah, blah, blah. So, of course, virtual environments, my ears pricked up. And I, yeah, we can, um, look, we can, and your network, and we've got a single platform, and single, uh, we can make sure all the carers are, and they were very excited. And then they said, how are we going to keep in touch? And one of them said, I've left my cards in the... <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help it. I was hearing, I just burst out. I was saying, you've left your cards. You're going to exchange dead trees at the end of this technology conversation. Okay, what you have to realize is that every day you've got to look not just at your own behavior and mindset, but at others. I'm going to show you how to get other people to be able to move without resistance. But I have to make a deal with you, and it's very simple. You have to swear to stop being old world and not changing yourself. Because otherwise, all you'll do is you'll just make them just as bad as you. Hand on heart, or else you have to put your fingers in your ears for the next 10 minutes. Hand on heart? Hey, he's not swaying. Come on, hand on heart. That's it. Okay, great. So, how do you get people to move? It's the same process which we used before, which is you have to understand that four and a half million years ago, life was really tough. Um, if you went out hunting and gathering, not only could you not catch the rabbit, but there was another problem. You see, all the other animals have exactly the same strategy of hunting and gathering. Oh, sorry, maybe hunt and gather. That's what they do for a living. Think about it. Your dog can bite better than you can. Your cat can scratch better than you can. So if you said four and a half million years ago, you said to your other half, darling, I'm going out. They say, where are you going? I'm going to the office to do some hunting and gathering. I'll bet you they didn't just wave you goodbye and say, goodbye, bring some milk when you're coming. What did they do? They gave you a massive hug. Why? Because you might not come back. Because all the other animals hunt and gather, and they're better than you. You're going to get eaten. But you set off anyway, okay? And so you're off, hunt and gather, hunt and gather. And as you're going out, all of a sudden, after the bushes burst, do you know saber two tigers, like the ones with the big heads? Yeah? And it's bounding towards you. Ha, ah, red eyes coming to eat you, okay? Okay, let's just think about that. You're about to get eaten. So, if you watch Discovery Channel, they'll tell you things like mankind became the top predator on the, on the planet because of their big brain. Have you heard this stuff before? Because mankind, using his big brain, was it some blood vessels, was able to think creative thoughts. That's a light bulb, okay? And communicate in complex ways. Have you seen this? You watch the same TV channels as me, or is it just me? Okay? And... Um, and then they'll carry on. And from the ideas, they were able to build tools. And these tools, they put into a toolbox. That's my attempt at a toolbox. Uh, which they could use for changing how things worked. And then they'll add in usually, uh, yeah, usually they'll explain that. They, and you could use the tools because of his opposable thumb. Have you come across this one? Opposable thumb. And then they'll finish off by saying, and they lived in these, these little tribal family groups where they would hunt and gather happily together between the trees. They'll tell you all this stuff. This is all nonsense. The reason you're here has got nothing to do with these. You don't believe me? Just let's work through the scenario. Saber to tiger, bouncing towards you at high speed. You see it coming. You take out your opposable thumb and go stop. <laughs> Forget that one. As he bounces towards you, you switch on your big brain with your logical communication. And you say, yes, saber to tiger. I'm sure we've got a smart strategy for that. It's digitally enabled. Is that going to save you? No. Thinking is always going to be too slow. Tools. They only had four tools in those days called big stone, little stone, big stick, little stick. That's it. Any volunteers for killing the tiger with a small stick? Forget that. Okay. So we're down to teamwork, all of them together. You know, so we're hunting together, but we're like a big team of hunter-gatherers. Can you imagine that? Okay? And we're out chanting together, the hunter-gatherer chant of, 
Hans, God, uh, Hans. Oh, come on, I can't be a team by myself. You've got to join in. Come on, let's raise the roof together and show the iTech Hunter Gatherer team. Have you got the attitude? Let's go. Hans, God, uh, Hans. Oh, come on. Real, come on, some passion, please. Hans, God, uh, Hans. Yes, God, uh, yeah, wonderful. Okay. <laughs> Bad news. Do other animals hunt in teams? Give me some examples. Wolves, hyenas, and saber-toothed tigers. So all of us here, and we meet at a 400 hungry saber-toothed tigers. What's the halftime score going to be? <laughs> Guys, none of that's true. What happens is everybody's carrying around in their neck just about here a little piece of software, crucial to understand how to make people move. The software checks around you to make sure everything is the same. It says, is everything the same? If the answer is yes, it says relax. Otherwise... It goes, oh my goodness, something has changed close to me. I can't run as fast as a rabbit. Therefore, if I can see the change, it's a massive threat. Then it does three fast things. The first most important thing it does is it makes you really, really, really scared. Why is it important to make you scared? Because when you're scared, you're in the moment. You're there. You're not thinking about anything else. I never met anyone who said, I'm scared I'm going to be my seven to tiger. But I've got a conference call at three. Nobody does that. You know what I mean? Just here. Once they're scared, it then fills them full of adrenaline. Oh, sorry, I missed a step. Most important step. <laughs> First of all, it switches your brain off. <laughs> Why does it switch your brain off? Because we know already thinking is going to be too slow. Then it fills you full of adrenaline. And then your heart beats and you fight, you flee. If you're not eaten, then the drug level goes down. The fear level might go down. And eventually, your brain might switch on. And then you go, ugh, pointy sticks poke together. Okay, this will have happened to you. You go to a meeting, somebody announces something you weren't expecting. Normally, you're very articulate. You could say something, but it's such a shock, you can't think what to say. It has happened to you. So you talk anyway, and rubbish comes out of your mouth. Well, of course, one must consider the integration of this platform. Rubbish, okay? And then you go home, you have a beer, you have a shower, you relax, and you say, damn, what I should have said to them was. You got it? Same process. You've still got it in your neck. So is everyone you need to influence when you leave this place. So how do we get around it? If you think about what I've been doing, have you noticed how many questions I use? Is it more questions than statements? Was it was like 60, 40, 80, 20? What do you think? That was seven questions in a row, by the way. <laughs> Lots of questions. Why? Because when you hit the questions, remember the thing about you, when your brain comes up with an idea, it falls in love with it. That's why questions are so powerful, because they get past that first defense. But the questions aren't useful on their own. They have to be in a process, in a structure. If you look at the way I've been doing it, I've been mixing story with outcome. So I tell you the story about hunter-gatherer, which then gives you an answer. I tell you about the time travelers, and you then realize it is crazy to move atoms when you should move electrons. It's obvious. I don't, you know, once I've told you the story, you know you move atoms, human beings, because you need them to care for each other, and you move electrons for everything else. Obvious, you with me? Example, point. Story, laughter, point. That process bypasses your logical, cynical brain and gets you to start to invent the solution yourself. And that's how you're going to become transformation ninjas. So I want you to do this. I want you to think about something concrete, which you want to do after the session. I want you to think about the three people who are most likely to not immediately jump up and say, that's wonderful. Have you got them in your head? And for each of them, I want you to try and think, what combination of story and question will I use? Just do it for one of them. What, what will I tell them? So don't go back and say, there was some really great kit. That's not a story. A story is, oh, I came across. And you tell the story almost like the one, two, three we did. You know, from the engagement point of view, and then you finish it off with something like, how could we do this in our organization? Or what could you do to support me in this situation? You only have 10 seconds because I'm running out of time. Somebody important, think of a story. What's the question you're going to finish with? You don't have to share it. It's, you can keep it secret because the person might be sitting next to you. <laughs> yeah? Great. Last piece. It's about you. You remember I made you swear? I made you swear that you wouldn't use this learning for, for evil. Okay. I guess the question is, what about you? 
You see, most of us actually don't move forward because of the way we're designed. I'll show you how crazily we're designed. We're designed in a most peculiar way. Um, I'll show you two images, and hopefully one of them will, will trigger in you uh, a response. Let's just see if I can find him. There we go. Okay. That one usually triggers a response in people where they go, oh! did you have a little bit of, oh! it's just a chap squatting on a pavement which he's drawn on ch in chalk on. But your brain sees that danger immediately and you recoil. At the moment, there's stuff you know you need to change and your brain is telling you, oh, that one's dangerous, that won't get you into trouble. You're going to do what? Present from the cloud? Are you nuts? You need to find that thing and pull at it. Because the thing you won't realize is as a human being, you are rubbish at assessing how dangerous things really are. You see, here's the thing. Every year in the UK, 50 people are killed by their underpants. <laughs> it's true. It's a real statistic. You can look it up. 50 people a year killed by their underpants. But I will bet you that you don't wake up in the morning and go, oh, I'm going to the underpants drawer. And then when you're putting them on, you go, oh, kill our underpants. No, you just put them on stylishly without a second thought. Am I right? Because you're doing it all the time, so it's familiar, and familiarity fools you into thinking it's not risky, but it is. An unfamiliarity, something new, fools you into thinking it's dangerous, but it might not be, and often it isn't. Make sense? No, they really do. It's really dangerous. The way they do it is they put their pants on when they're standing up, and they trip over and hit their heads. So just be aware, and especially in the, the field you're in. So the question is, What have I done? <laughs> okay, the question is, what is it you're going to overcome your fear of? And remember, the fear doesn't go away until after you've done it. It's, you know, you go, I'm scared of doing it. If you don't do it, you're still scared. If you do it, I'm scared of it, I've done it. Oh my goodness, it wasn't as bad as I thought. So, as a last thing, you remember we started with pairs with the hopes and fears? Okay, I'm going to let you start to think about what you want to take away, but I have my adverts to squeeze in. Can I squeeze it in? Is anyone good? Okay, so... We run this thing called a, um, called a Cubex, uh, and basically, you can come. It's free. It's for, I'm trying to get as many people around the world involved in health to participate as possible. Okay, so here we go. So this is, um, this is sort of what it looks like. It's on Cube. This is CubeCC Cubex. That's where you would need to go. If you want to actually um, get a sense of um, what the, the sessions look like, I'll try and find you one if I'm a good person. There you go, Cubex Rest King Shop. Um, so this is sort of um, a group of people working on a whiteboard and a topic. It could be how to integrate care. Uh, this is them continuing to work at the whiteboard. Um, keep going, keep going, keep going. Come on. Uh, this is them sitting, listening to a presentation. I don't remember whose presentation. Breakout sessions. When they sit down, they can only hear the other people logged in so they can have a conversation. This is uh, De De Derek Feely, uh, impro health improvement CEO, is that right? Okay, so he was one of the speakers recently, and so on. So go and have a look. It'll be a good way to connect to people and stay working with them, and uh, it'll really cheer me up. So now your homework. What are you going to do differently? Remember we were in pairs when we started? I only want a short sentence from each of you about what you're going to do differently, and then we'll wrap. Okay? So what are you going to do differently? You're now transformation ninjas. You know the secret of scaring people. You know how to bring stories and questions rather than surprising like a take up a tiger. You know how to balance your fears so you're not worried. What are you going to do differently? Just, just, just one thing. Just go, go, talk, talk, tangible. Okay, you can listen to that then. <laughs> okay. okay. Great. Okay, guys, um, I think we're going to wrap. Now, when you're presenting, they always tell you you should have a final joke. Um, does anyone here have a final joke for me? <laughs> I'm going to stop there because um, what I want to leave you with is the thoughts of what you're going to go and do. But really important, I want you to feel that you've done it. The fear has gone away. You've delivered it. I want you to feel that for a second, and I'll just share, share a final story, personal story from, from me. Um, as I, when I started, I explained I have this strange life where I'm half digital and stuff like that, 
And what's quite interesting is for an oldie, it's quite a shock to people because oldies are supposed to behave themselves and hate new things and hate technology. Um, and I've not been very good at that. Um, and I have this vision that one day someone's going to come to me and knock on the door and say, Oi, you're being arrested by the age police because you're not doing it properly. Um, but if that day ever comes, I will definitely tweet about it. So uh, you'll find out. <laughs> Guys, I'm done. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Pleasure. Thanks.